This is All India Radio. We now bring you a special news program on COVID-19. Good evening. I'm Tanvi Taninja and with me is Abhijit Lorang. The headlines. Prime Minister says government is committed to help dynamic small and medium businesses and ensuring all possible assistance to the needy. Group of ministers on COVID-19 discuss ways to mitigate hardships faced by people and role of ministries in providing relief to people. Government reviews foreign direct investment policy to curb opportunistic takeovers of Indian companies. Congress welcomes the move. Center requests states and union territory administrations to designate nodal officers to coordinate with control rooms set up by union government to address issues of laborers. Health Ministry says action taken on the field level yielding positive results as 45 districts in 23 states have not registered new cases in last 14 days. And Indian Railways transports more than 4.2 million tons of food grains during the lockdown period. The Prime Minister said that the world is fighting COVID-19 together and humanity will surely overcome this pandemic. In a series of tweets, Mr Modi congratulated all those working round the clock to ensure the country's energy needs. He appreciated the efforts and steps taken by various government agencies for serving the nation amid COVID-19 pandemic. The Prime Minister said the government is committed to help the dynamic small and medium businesses and is ensuring all possible assistance to those who need it. Mr Modi said he is proud of the Indian Railways team which is continuously helping citizens in this crucial hour. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also said there is no need to panic and urged people to keep taking proper precautions to fight COVID-19. Responding to Food and Consumer Affairs Minister Ram Vilas Paswan's comment over the steps to ensure availability of food grains across the country, Mr Modi tweeted, Together, we all will certainly defeat the COVID-19 pandemic. Earlier, Mr Paswan had said that the Food Corporation of India has loaded 1.99 lakh metric tons of food grains through 71 rail rakes and unloaded 1.8 lakh metric tons from 64 rakes yesterday. He informed that states have so far lifted around 30 lakh metric tons of food grains for free distribution. In another tweet, while sharing a video of Indian cricketers appealing to make and wear a mask, the Prime Minister said, small but essential precautions can keep people safe. He said it is important to spread awareness about it. People from all walks of life are donating to PM Cares Fund to help the countries fight against COVID-19. From employees of various ministries, public sector undertakings, entrepreneurs, to housewives and students, everyone has pitched in with their contribution. Employees of the Home Ministry, Defence Ministry, External Affairs Ministry, Railways Ministry, Women and Child Development Ministry, among others, have all pledged to donate their one day's salary. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has appealed to people to contribute to the fund, saying... This will go a long way in creating a healthier India. He said this fund will also cater to similar distressing situations if they occur in the times ahead. The Defence Minister Rajnath Singh today interacted with a group of ministers on the COVID-19 situation. In a tweet, Mr Rajnath Singh said, The meeting discussed ways to mitigate the hardships being faced by the people and the role of ministers in providing relief to the people. He said the guidelines to allow limited activities and the measures announced by the Reserve Bank of India were also appreciated. Information and Broadcasting Minister Prakash Javrekar, Human Resource and Development Minister Ramesh Pokhrial Nishank, Railway Minister Piyush Goel, Labour and Employment Minister Santosh Kumar Gangwar, Women and Child Development Minister Shneti Irani and Consumer Affairs Minister Food and Public Distribution Ram Vilas Paswan took part in the meeting. The government of India reviewed the existing foreign direct investment policy in light of the current COVID-19 pandemic. The new provisions of the policy aim towards curbing opportunistic takeovers and acquisitions of Indian companies. The new norms state that an entity of a country sharing land border with India can invest only under the government route. The policy is also applicable for entities whose owner is a citizen or is situated in any such border-sharing country. 
for Pakistan-based owners, citizens or entities' investments could be made only under the government route in sectors other than defense, space, atomic energy and other notified sectors prohibited for foreign investment. The new policy clarifies that in case of any change or transfer in ownership of an Indian entity arising because of FDIs from such countries would also require government approval. Congress has welcomed the amendment to the FDI policy by the government in view of the COVID-19 pandemic. The current party said the decision will plug creeping acquisition of any Indian entity. Senior Congress leader Rahul Gandhi thanked the central government for amending the FDI norms and making government's approval mandatory in some specific cases. Party spokesman Randeep Singh Surjewala said that the party is glad that the government has positively responded to former Congress president's suggestion of protecting Indian corporates from hostile takeovers. Union Minister for Labour and Employment, Santosh Gangavar, requested various states and union territory administrations to designate a nodal officer from Labour Department to coordinate with control rooms set up by the union government. Control rooms will address the issues of labourers in view of the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown. In a letter written by Mr. Gangavar to the Labour Ministers of State Governments, he said that the officers in the Labour Departments may be sensitised about the 20 control rooms set up across the country by the central government to address grievances of daily labourers and workers. Briefing media in New Delhi, Health Ministry spokesman said that the action taken on the field level is yielding positive results as Mahe in Puducherry and Kodagu in Karnataka have not registered any new case in the last 28 days. Besides this, 45 other districts in 23 states have also not registered any new case in the last 14 days. The official said that mortality rate of COVID-19 in the country is around 3.3%. He said as per age-wise analysis, it was found that 14.4% death has been reported in the age group of 0 to 45 years, 10.3% in the age group of 45 to 60 years, 33.1% between 60 to 75 years and for people above 75 years of age, the death percentage is 42.2%. He also informed that 83% death cases had comorbidity. 991 fresh confirmed cases of COVID-19 have been reported in the country in the last 24 hours, taking the total number to 14,378. Out of these, 1,992 patients have recovered and have been discharged from the hospitals, while 480 patients have died. The official also informed that 4,291 COVID-19 cases are connected with a single source in the Nizamuddin Markas cluster. In the states, there are 45 other districts where there has been no new case in the past 14 days. In 22 new districts, there are 12 states where there has been no case in the past 14 days. If in this way, there is no case in the past 14 days, जिला स्थाई पर कंटेनमेंट स्ट्रेटजी और लॉकडाउन पर हम काम करते रहें तो हमें लगता है कि हमें इसी तरह के पॉजिटिव रिजल्ट्स आते रहेंगे the Home Ministry spokesperson said that both the centre and states have started control rooms and helpline numbers for addressing citizens' problems. She also said all states have started state and district emergency centres. She also said that the new toll-free numbers of the Home Ministry, 1930 and 1944, are resolving citizens' grievances. Besides, single emergency response number 112 is operational in 29 states and union territories and police, fire and ambulance services can be availed on contacting this number. ये आपातकालीन सेवा लोकेशन बेस्ड ट्रैकिंग या जीपीएस की मदद से पीड़ित व्यक्ति की लोकेशन को ट्रैक करते हुए अति शीघ्र सेवा प्रदान कर सकती है। कोविड-19 के दौरान लॉकडाउन में इमरजेंसी में लोगों ने इस प्रणाली का काफी उपयोग किया है। गर्भवती महिलाओं ने, बुजुर्गों ने, दिव्यांग जनों ने 112 का इस्तेमाल करते हुए सहायता पाई है। The official said foreign citizens who are stranded in India due to the spread of COVID-19 and whose visas have expired or are going to be expired would be extended till midnight of 3rd of May upon receipt of online application by the foreigner. She said exit to foreign nationals stranded in India, if so requested by them during this period, will also be granted to them for up to 14 days beyond 3rd of May till 17th of May without levy of overstay penalty. 
Indian Railways continues its endeavor to ensure availability of essential commodities like food grains through its freight services during the nationwide lockdown due to COVID-19. In order to ensure uninterrupted supply of daily essentials, Railways has carried food grains across the country. During the lockdown period from the 25th of last month till yesterday, more than 4.2 million tons of food grains have been transported by the national carrier. Indian Railways has identified 65 routes for spa- parcel special trains since the start of the lockdown for perishable commodities including fruits, vegetables, milk and dairy products and seeds for agriculture purpose. Congress has set up a consultative group to deliberate on matters of current concern related to COVID-19 and formulate the views of the party on various issues. An 11-member group will be headed by senior party leader and former Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh and the group will meet virtually every day to deliberate on the current situation. Before we move on a reminder of the headlines. Prime Minister says government is committed to help dynamic small and medium businesses and ensure all possible assistance to the needy. Group of ministers on COVID-19 discuss ways to mitigate hardships being faced by people and role of ministers in providing relief to people. Government reviews foreign direct investment policy to curb opportunistic takeover of Indian companies. Congress welcomes the move. Center requests states and union territory administrations to designate nodal officers to coordinate with control rooms set up by union government to address issues of laborers. Health Ministry says action taken on the field level yielding positive results as 45 districts in 23 states have not registered new cases in the last 14 days and Indian Railways transports more than 4.2 million tons of food grains during the lockdown period. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. The centre, in its revised guidelines, has allowed certain relaxations in the notified services from 20th of April in areas without hot spots. A series of directives have been put in place to ensure a strict compliance of lockdown. Our correspondent takes a look at the directives to be followed in agriculture-related activities. All agricultural and horticultural activities such as farming operations by farmers and farm workers in field will remain fully functional. The agencies for procurement of agricultural products including minimum support price operations will be at work. Mondays operated by the Agriculture Produce Market Committee or as notified by the estates will be allowed to operate. Shops of agriculture machinery, its spare parts and repairs will remain open. Manufacturing, distribution and retail of fertilizers, pesticides and seeds have been permitted to remain open. Movement of harvesting and sowing related machines within and across the estates is allowed. Operation of the fishing aquaculture industry, movement of fish and fish products and workers of all these activities are allowed. The guideline also allows operation of tea, coffee and rubber plantations with maximum of 50% workers. In case of animal husbandry, activities like collection, processing, distribution and sale of milk and its products by milk processing plants including transport and supply chain are permitted. Poultry farms, livestock farming activity are allowed. Animal feed manufacturing and feed plants and operation of animal shelter homes are permitted. Besides, Mandrega works are allowed with strict implementation of social distancing and priority to be given under Mandrega to irrigation and water conservation. The move is aimed at facilitating the agriculture and related activities. Anand Kumar, AIA News, Delhi. In our series Experts Speak on All India Radio, we bring you the views of leading medical experts on COVID-19. Talking to AIR News, Director Ames Dr. Randeep Guleria said that the government is setting up dedicated COVID-19 hospitals, increasing beds and medical facilities for providing treatment to infected people. In the last few weeks where the cases have not increased that dramatically a lot of preparation has gone on in the government both from the point of view of making dedicated covid hospitals developing a strategy of having oxygen available to all our patients developing icu facilities and that is helping in a big way as far as managing these patients are concerned so every day number of beds number of hospitals are being increased so that in case there is large outbreak we are well prepared Talking to AIR News, Dr. Naresh Gupta of the LNJP Hospital Delhi said that maintaining physical distancing is very essential. Social distancing is very useful, and I also must uh, remind that social distancing, which actually, as I said, is physical distancing, would save you not only from coronavirus but also save you from dozens of other viruses that cause cold and many other diseases. You yourself said about the common cold. Now, all those common colds also tend to spread through the respiratory system, so they'll also be prevented. 
Actor Kriti Sanhan talks about the importance of keeping physical distance while going out during lockdown. Guys, there are very small basic things that we all can take care of. If you're stepping out to buy grocery, make sure that you're at least at a six feet distance from each other. Do not touch anything, wear a mask, do not touch your face, come back, wash your hands for at least 20 seconds, sanitize everything that you've touched. If you're going to your lift, then push the lift button from your hands, not your elbows. If you're a righty, use your left hand to open all the doors and turn knobs. Stay positive, stay fit, stay at home. The News Services Division of All India Radio in its bilingual live phone-in program today will bring you a special discussion on COVID-19. Dr. Rajneesh Kaushik, Senior Physician in RML Hospital, will participate in the discussion. Listeners can ask questions to the experts on toll-free telephone number 1-800-115767. You can also ask questions on the telephone number 011-2331-4444 and post queries on our Twitter handle at AIRNewsLA by hashtag Ask AIR. This can be heard tonight on the FM Gold channel and additional frequencies from 9.25pm onwards. This program will also be available on our website newsonair.com and on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You can also follow us on the News on AIR app for regular updates. Indian Council of Medical Research said that the National Task Force has reviewed the data evolving from various countries on the use of rapid antibody test kits and based on available evidence, the testing strategy for COVID-19 has been revised. ICMR has issued the advisory mentioning the protocol for using rapid antibody test kits in COVID-19 hotspot areas in view of the states showing keen interest to use this, these kits in the affected areas. It was advised by the ICMR that in case any state does not have a hotspot, these tests may be used for any hotspot which may emerge in future or as a surveillance tool for epidemiolo epidemiological purposes in such areas where cases have not emerged so far. ICMR has said that the rapid antibody tests are useful for epidemiological studies and surveillance purposes and the test has to be done under strict medical supervision. It suggested that while using the rapid antibody test kits, it is critical to understand that frontline test for COVID-19 diagnosis is real-time PCR-based molecular test which is aimed at early detection of virus. The rapid antibody test cannot replace the frontline test. It also said the rapid antibody test is a supplementary tool to assess the prevalence of the disease within a specified area and the test will only be of utility after a minimum of 7 days of onset of symptoms. Bhupen Singh, AIR News, Delhi. Union Minister for Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, Nitin Gadkari, has assured the footwear industry of all possible support from the government to tide over the challenges arising out of the COVID-19 lockdown. He was interacting with the representatives of the Confederation of Indian Footwear Industries via video conferencing from Nagpur. Mr. Gadkari said that the government has already released over 5,204 crore rupees to MSMEs as the refund from the Income Tax Department in the last 10 days, which will help the sector in a big way. He also called upon the industry to work upon import substitution and make use of the opportunity for export. Ministry of Tourism celebrated the World Heritage Day 2020 today through a webinar series. Union Minister of Tourism and Culture Pralat Singh Patel addressing participants through webinar quoted Vasudev Kutumbakam, the world is one from the Maha Upanishad saying that India demonstrated its true spirit and humility through the help it extended to all the tourists stranded in the country since the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic. He added that values of resolve and silence resilience is holding everyone together even in these testing times. Prime Minister Narendra Modi in his address to the nation in the wake of the extension of lockdown had spoken about the importance of Ayush. He'd also said that one should drink plenty of warm water and practice yoga asans, pranayam and meditation to boost immunity. More from our Srinagar correspondent. After taking a cue from the Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, in his recent assertion that Ayush plays an important role in boosting one's immunity, AIR Newsroom Srinagar spoke to Dr. Mohan Singh, Director Ayush J&K, and he said, Tulsi ke das patte, adrat ka eight to thai, peas, manakka, jisko ki afghani kishmish kehte hain, uske teen dhane, dal chini, a gram, kali mirch ke teen dhane, ye mila ke, jisko ki 250 milligram ml pani mein, 
उबाल के जब ल्यूक पानी हो जाए तो सुबह शाम आपने इसको लेना है हमने दूध में आधा चम्मच हल्दी का डाल के सुबह शाम लेना है ये सब चीजें जो मैं बता रहा हूँ ये इम्यूनिटी बूस्टिंग के लिए है so people at large should follow the advice of prime minister and the ayush department in letter and spirit and somehow heave a sigh of relief from the evil designs of the ongoing pandemic this is sunil kohl for air news from shrinagar in punjab 23 more covid-19 positive cases have been reported one patient has been cured and two have died today with this the total number of positive cases found so far have risen to 234 our correspondent reports 15 people reported positive in patiala today according to civil surgeon dr harish malhotra six patients are from rajpura nine are from patiala city and all are contacts of a bookseller who were found positive earlier today one more person reported positive in gurdaspur one in sas nagar and six in jalandhar Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal today said that there had been a slight decrease in the number of COVID-19 cases in the national capital in the last 3 days and hoped that it would reduce further in the coming days. Addressing an online media briefing briefing on the coronavirus outbreak, Mr Kejriwal said that out of 2274 samples tested, only 67 people tested positive for the novel coronavirus on Friday. He said 26 members of a family tested positive for coronavirus in an area in Jahangirpuri yesterday which has been declared a containment area. Mr Kejriwal also announced a compensation of 1 crore rupees for the families of all employees including medical staff police personnel teachers civil defense volunteers sanitation workers who die from coronavirus infection while serving covid-19 patients Assam police has clarified that there is no shortage of salt in the state. In a tweet, Assam police urged people not to believe in rumors. The tweet also said that Assam has sufficient stock of essential food items including salt. In Bihar, the recovery rate of the corona patients is over 50% which exceeds the national average of 13.62%. 42 positive cases have been fully recovered from corona infection. 85 positive cases have been reported from different parts of the state. Out of 38 districts, no case of corona has been reported from 25 districts. Door to door surveys being undertaken in over 8000 villages to detect positive cases of corona. The survey has so far been conducted in over 12,26 thousand houses to detect suspected cases in a bid to prevent community transmission of coronavirus in bihar asha and health workers as well as 8000 teams are doing door to door campaign in sensitive areas of the state the center has made available 6240 rapid test kits to bihar In Chhattisgarh several steps have been taken during the lockdown to alleviate the problems of migrant workers and provide them with basic facilities a report from our Raipur correspondent Due to the nationwide lockdown imposed to control the corona pandemic many workers in Chhattisgarh were unable to return to their home state such workers have been housed in relief camps set up in various districts of Chhattisgarh the government is providing food to them facilities for their entertainment like television and carrom board have also been arranged in the relief camp in a relief camp established in Bishanpur community building in Sarguja district education is also being provided to the children of migrant workers Meanwhile the Chhattisgarh government has launched an online education facility for college students it will be helpful for students during lockdown more than 1200 videos for 280 course material and 18 audio lecture of graduation subjects have been uploaded on this online portal vikalp shukla aiya news raipur In West Bengal, two more people have died of coronavirus in the past 24 hours, taking the death toll to 12. Giving this information in Kolkata this afternoon, the State Chief Secretary Rajiv Sena said that another 12 fresh cases of coronavirus have been detected during the period. He said altogether 178 corona positive patients are under treatment at different hospitals in the state at present. Mr Sena said that seven positive corona patients were discharged from hospitals after recovery during the last 24 hours. With these 62 corona positive patients have been released. In Madhya Pradesh the state government has started manufacturing 10000 personal protective equipment PPE kits daily for frontline warriors battling coronavirus. State's additional chief secretary health Mohammad Suleiman informed that the state government has over 9.5 lakh hydroxychloroquine tablets and adequate stock of N95 masks. 
Shri Suleiman said that we ensure development of the PPE kit locally. We are making 10,000 PPE kits daily in a factory at Pithampur near Indore and providing them to our people. So far, we have distributed 1 lakh PPE kits. Apart from that, 25 dedicated COVID-19 hospitals have been set up in Madhya Pradesh, besides 66 dedicated health centers and more than 400 COVID care centers. He also informed that the state government has received 30,000 rapid diagnostic kits from the central government and they will be made available in Indore and other cities. COVID treatment is free in Madhya Pradesh. Nobody would be charged a single penny. Meanwhile, after 50 more people tested positive for coronavirus in Indore, the number of COVID-19 cases in the state has climbed to 1,360. So far, 69 people have died due to infection in the state. Sanjeev Sharma, AII News, Bhopal. Jamila Abbas, a resident of Jamnagar, says her family could save money during the lockdown thanks to the free cylinders under the Ujwala Yojana. मेरा नाम जमीला अबास मकरानी है उज्जवल योजना तरफ से हमको एक तीन बाटले फ्री में दिए जाएंगे एक बाटला हमको फ्री में मिल गया और हमारे खाते में 740 रुपये जमा हो गए लॉकडाउन के हिसाबे हमको फ्री में बाटला मिला तो हमको बहुत अच्छा लगता है in Mizoram, relief is being delivered to people, particularly the poor sections of the society. One of the beneficiaries who got benefit during this tough time expressed her thanks to the government. My name is Lalam Rota and I stay at Salem Veng, I saw. I'm happy to say that my family got free rice this month of 40 kg. I'm a PHH card holder and during this COVID-19. In Maharashtra, a 30-year-old coronavirus-positive woman has given birth to a baby girl at the district government hospital of Aurangabad. Civil surgeon Dr. Sundar Kulkarni told that the baby girl is healthy with a weight of 3 kilos and 250 grams and is doing well as of now. Dr. Kamlakar Murkhedkar, who led the team which carried out the cesarean delivery, said the baby girl was born this morning. Meanwhile, Maharashtra continues to be the most affected state with a total of 3,300 123 COVID-19 cases. 331 patients have recovered and 201 deaths have been reported so far. Our correspondent has more. The Maharashtra government is ensuring adequate food security for the poor people in the state during the current lockdown. Under the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana, food grains containing 5 kg of rice and additional 1 kg of pulses are being provided free of cost for 3 months for every beneficiary covered under the National Food Security Act. The state government has also decided to pay rupees 2,000 each to over 12 lakh registered construction workers who have lost their livelihoods due to the ongoing coronavirus lockdown. Meanwhile, today, the Maharashtra government has urged Muslims to offer prayers and break their fast during the month of Ramzan beginning next week inside their homes instead of gathering at mosques or any other public place in view of coronavirus outbreak. Nivedita Bholkar, AIR News, Mumbai. In Tamil Nadu, 82 COVID-19 patients have been discharged from hospitals while 49 new cases have been reported today. The State Health Minister Dr. C. Vijay Bhaskar told reporters this evening the mortality rate is being maintained well within 1.1%. No death of the positive patients have been reported today from the state. Though the figure of the, st of the total infected cases has gone up to 1,372, the active case load is said to be 1,007 people. Air India has announced that it has opened bookings for select domestic flights for travel from 4th of May and for international flights from 1st of June this year. Air India has said that in the light of the ongoing global health concerns, it has currently stopped accepting bookings on all domestic flights for travel till 3rd of May and on all international flights for travel till 31st of May. And now before we end the headlines once again. Prime Minister says government is committed to help dynamic small and medium businesses and ensuring all possible assistance to the needy. Group of ministers on COVID-19 discussed ways to mitigate hardships faced by people and role of ministries in providing relief to people. Government reviews foreign direct investment policy to curb opportunistic takeovers of Indian companies. Congress welcomes the move. Centre requests states and union territory administrations to designate nodal officers to coordinate with control rooms set up by union government to address issue of labourers. And Indian Railways transports more than 4.2 million tonnes of food grains during the lockdown period. And with that, we end the special news programme on COVID-19. 